It's very well established that children from lower income households do worse in many ways than children from households with more income. They tend to have poorer health, to do less well in school, they're more likely to report low self-esteem and to get into trouble as teenagers, for example. But the reasons for these differences are disputed. Is it income itself that's making the difference? Or is it that there are other differences between households that are responsible? For example, households with more income are also often households where parents have more education. They may take more interest in their child's education. Uh, perhaps they may be stricter about homework and other rules. So income could just be a correlate, not a cause of the differences in outcomes. This is a really topical question right at the moment, because we're seeing a number of serious reforms to the benefit system that are reducing income for households with children. One of the government's arguments for focusing austerity cuts on the welfare bill is that this allows relative protection to services such as education. The government in fact talks quite a lot about social mobility and the importance of investing in children's life chances and opportunities. And we've seen the introduction of policies, for example, such as the pupil premium, which channel more resources within schools to poorer children. But if household income matters, cuts to benefits may be very damaging to these attempts to improve life chances. We conducted a review of research studies that examine whether money itself matters to children's outcomes. We have very strict criteria for which studies were included. They had to convince us that they were getting at causal relationships and not just at associations. That meant they might make use of experimental situations where one group but not another received an income boost, perhaps because of a change in benefits that affected some family types but not others. Or they might track families over time to see what happened to children's outcomes when income went up or down. What we found is very strong evidence that money does indeed matter. So children from lower income households have worse outcomes in part because they are poorer, not just because poverty is correlated with other household and parental characteristics. This doesn't mean that the other differences, such as parental education, parenting style, aren't also having an effect. But it's clear that money itself is an important part of the story. We found most evidence on the, income, the impact on children's cognitive development and achievement in school. And there was also strong evidence on measures of social and behavioural development, such as emotional well-being and, and risk-taking behaviour. The effects are quite substantial in size. In fact, broadly similar to the effects of spending similar amounts on school or on early education. An obvious question that then arises is why money matters, and there seem to be two types of reason. One is that more money simply allows more spending on things that make a difference to child development, such as healthy food, books, stimulating activities. The second mechanism seems to be perhaps more important. More money, particularly in low-income households, changes the nature of what takes place at home. By reducing stress and anxiety on parents, it allows them to focus more time and attention on children. So, we found evidence that increases in income leads to reductions in maternal depression and to improvements in parenting and the home environment. Increases in income also reduce smoking during pregnancy, which is a big factor in low birth weight. And being born with a low birth weight is in turn a predictor of poorer health and educational outcomes and puts a child at a disadvantage right from the start of their life. Now, we want to do more research into some of these mechanisms. And there's also a need for more research on this question in the UK. The studies that fit our criteria were from a range of countries, including the UK, but the majority were from the United States. Still, we think the evidence that is out there already is sufficiently clear and robust to raise real concerns about the impact of current austerity measures and welfare reforms on the life chances of poorer children.